Hello everyone, welcome back to OC Recovery's YouTube channel. Before I go any further, make sure to like that video, subscribe, share it with anyone you know that is basically suffering for what I'm gonna talk about today, and that is fear of fear. Um, I have covered fear of fear uh, quite a bit on this channel, but it's been a long time since I've done a direct video talking about how important fear of fear is, where to learn about fear of fear, why fear or fear if not covered properly and understood by the sufferer, whether it's OCD or any other chronic anxiety disorder, you're more than likely not going to see the progress you want to get because you can be doing all these exposures and stuff like that and really not make a whole lot of progress. So let me know throughout the video if anything kind of resonates with you, if, you're, if you think, oh shit, I mean, that's something I think I'm struggling with. So just comment down below. I have a lot of experience with this because this is really... You know, fear of fear is the main thing that needs to be covered with sensory motor slash somatic OCD, aka hyper awareness. So being obsessed with your blinking, breathing, saliva, swallowing, heartbeat, stuff like that. Um, it's not so much the sensation itself. It, it, yes, it, it's frustrating that you're hyper aware of the sensation, but it's the fear of being stuck forever. So first of all, what is fear of fear? And, uh, I've, again, I've covered this many times. So fear of fear is a few things. The number one thing that fear of fear is, is the fear of being stuck forever. The fear of being stuck with chronic anxiety. The fear of being st stuck with severe intrusive thoughts. The fear of being stuck with OCD and these type of things. And then on top of that, we have the fear of relapses. It's really all the what ifs. What if it ruins every single event I go to? What if it does all these other things? Daisy sucking on water over there, just chasing Milo outside, what they do. So these things are really, really important to cover because a common story that I, for myself, I'll use myself as an example, I had been working on recovery for OCD for about almost a year, and I had made great progress, tremendous progress. I had no real avoidance behaviors. I was doing everything I wanted to do. Um, I still had background chronic anxiety, you know, arbitrarily 80% of the day, but it still was 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 there, but it wasn't as severe. You know, if it was a dial gauge yanked up to, you know, 95%, like what it was all the time, waking up in panic attacks, sweating 24-7, just like shaking. But it was there. Like I had anxiety present at some point or the other, the majority of the day. But it was like humming in the background, kind of like a, a white noise per se, as many people can relate to that. And I would think to myself, well, this is as good as it gets. You know, this is this is amazing. I feel so great. But it left the door open in many ways for OCD to kind of latch in in other forms. Because for myself, you know, I didn't even realize this was part of fear, fear. I'm, you know, I was afraid of getting other types of things. Not even so much other types of themes, other types of hyper awarenesses, uh, like hyper awareness of numbness in my thumb. I had that for a few months. Um, I've had a hyper awareness of other bodily sensations and just weird things like that that would just come and go. Like the, sometimes I'd notice my nose for a couple hours. So there was all these weird little things that would latch and I had no idea that the fear of being going backwards and the fear of being stuck again was driving this entire cycle home. So there's a couple of examples that we could talk about now that we covered fear of fear. So like I said, let me know if this is something that maybe hasn't been explained to you. And so I got my little, I'm a sticky note person with my regular stuff I do in life. But, you know, the first thing I want to cover is where to learn more about this, where to learn more about fear of fear. The channel is great. There's probably numerous amount of videos covering fear of fear and, and, you know, how to go about disputing fear of fear. And then on the reading list, Paul David's book, which is the last book on the reading list, um, At Last of Light, is a great book for, like, layman's terms explaining what fear of fear means. Albert Ellis's book, the first book on the reading list, How to Stubbornly Refuse, is really important because it shows you how to actually break down. Because understanding how fear of fear works and actually moving towards disputing and, you know, really coming to a philosophical outlook that you're not promised anything in life. And just because you go backwards and everything like that doesn't mean you can't handle that. And if you never saw the relief that some people may see, that doesn't mean it gives you a reason to not want to go further in life. It's like for me in my career, I have a lot of ambitions, but if I never reach them, it's not the end of the world for me. And that's really important to talk about. So the YouTube channel is a great place. The Instagram, OCD Recovery UK, 
And then the free Facebook group, which has about 15 and a half thousand people. Um, there's a lot of moderators in there. We're constantly talking to people. Um, a lot of fear, fear of questions. And like I said, it's that typical question. Um, I've made all this progress. Why am I still stuck? Understandably so. It's a very common question. I ask that all the time. Like, what is going on? Why am I still scared? It's because fear of fear was really present. And when I listen to a lot of people speak about anxiety, the problem with anxiety is the way it's delivered to the sufferer. It's delivered in a doctoral language that has verbiage, talking about neuroplasticity, down-regulation of the prefrontal cortex, and up-regulation of the amygdala. I always say that word wrong, even though I learned it in school for how many years. Um, uh, left, right hemisphere, dopamine, serotonin. This stuff is cool, but it's for the researchers to find cures. Remember, there's no cure, but we will recover. We don't even need a cure, really, to be honest. It would bring less suffering, but I personally think the journey of OCD recovery is the most amazing thing that could ever happen to anyone, ever. You know, suffer for three years, potentially, to really change your life forever. Um, another way to look at it, and Paul David's book. Paul David's book is great, uh, like I said, to bring it down. And then how do you go about, okay, well, you're like, okay, I'm pretty sure I have fear of fear present, right? That's what I said to myself. I'm definitely afraid of being stuck. I'm definitely afraid of going backwards. Now, what do I do? There she comes. I got a scratch her now. She sits right next to me with a breath. That's what happens when Erica's not home. So let's look at some of the beliefs that keep people stuck. Well, let's go to conditional life acceptance. Um, uh, deservingness and fairness. Well, I don't deserve this and this isn't fair. This shouldn't happen to me. When in reality, deservingness is a, is a concept that humans made up. Humans have made up concept, concepts to bring down objective reality in a way to where it seems more um, easier to grasp, right? It's so much easier to say that person, I don't deserve that than, you know what? There's more than likely no such thing as deservingness or universal law. Uh, it's unfortunate that this is happening to me right now, but there's no law saying that I can't do this. We know that people can get better. I'm going to I'm gonna do what I can to get better in a non-compulsive manner. I'm going to bring it along for the ride. And if I don't make progress, I don't make progress. And if I go backwards, I go backwards. That takes critical thinking and rational thinking. And this doesn't. I don't deserve that. That takes no critical thinking. It's, it's actually fairy tale delusion when you really break it down. I know it's really hard to hear that, but it's the truth. This doesn't mean we have to agree or like something, but it means that we can kind of bring it down to an area to where it makes more sense in a rational manner. So, you know, the fear of relapsing. Well, you're more than likely gonna relapse. That's something you're gonna have to accept. You have a, a disorder that's chronic in the chronic format right now, more than likely if you're watching this. You're more than likely gonna have these relapses and that's completely okay. And you can let them be there or you could try and fight. Paul David's book says the best thing ever. You've been fighting for so long. So why not try and do the opposite? Guys, there's some serious truth to that. And then, so we covered the fear of relapses, which kind of goes in with backdoor spikes as well, which I've done a video on describing, you know, what backdoor spikes are, what relapses are. Because remember, when it comes to fear of fear, Understanding how, how the disorder operates is much more valuable than understanding the neurophysiology of, of anxiety. Understanding the anatomy, physiology, slash neuroscience of anxiety has no benefit for recovery. Not in the sense that it has no benefit. I mean, it has no sense and you don't need to know it to get better. Now, if you wanna learn about neuroscience, go ahead. I don't think most people want to learn about neuroscience. Most people don't. Most people want to learn about neuroscience because they're afraid that they don't understand the prefrontal cortex and dopamine serotonin, that they're not going to get better. And I'm here to tell you, you don't have to know any of that. So the all, everything I've talked about to date and coming towards the end of this video is super important with the fear of fear. So if you have ROCD and you're no longer trying to avoid feelings and you're no longer trying to figure out if they're the right one and, and you're still stuck, address the fear of fear. If you have POCD and you've done all these exposures and you've gone by schools and you've held your kids and you've done all this stuff, kind of overlaps with harm OCD, look at fear of fear. Sensory motor, existential, solipsism, 
these like odd, not very common, but themes that don't have any real direct exposures. Like sensory motor doesn't really have direct exposures. It has avoidance behaviors that you have. Look at her, stop scratching her for two seconds. She starts growling at me, what a brat. Um, but I love her. Uh, there's not really a direct exposure. So what you do is you look at what's going on and you go, oh, okay, well, I brought down all my avoidance behaviors, I'm pretty sure, but what else is lacking? I'm afraid of noticing this sensation forever and being stuck forever. The, the fear of being stuck for the rest of your life is such a driving factor in chronic anxiety and OCD, it needs to be covered. It just needs to, especially if you're suffering 24 seven latched all day like I was. So, and many other people I'm friends with. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, um, if you know anyone who has anxiety or, or OCD, please, chronic anxiety, OCD, please, you know, send this video or this channel their way. I, we, I take a lot of time out of my life because it's very important to me to help other people with this. I know what it's like to be chronically stuck and not, I mean, it's a landscape of, you're kind of like going through a minefield of, well, this person says one thing and then this person says another and then this research says this and this expert says this and this expert says this. When it really comes down to getting better from OCD slash chronic anxiety, exposures when necessary, moving with uncertainty, time and patience, disputing the core beliefs, whatever they may be, usually fear of fear, fear of not having a feeling, fear of being left alone, fear of rejection, uh, harm OCD, POCD. There's like four or five things that like if I listed, if I was like, this is what it, this is what you need to do to get better from these things. It'd be a list of five things, like I just said, the things I just said, but it's the the conception, the, the idea of what needs to be done is a lot easier for me to present than what the journey actually entails. Because there's many ups and downs, backdoor spikes and all these other things. I feel a sneeze. Huh? Whoa. That was a good one. So thank you so much for watching um, and have a great day.